fewer things divide the houseplant community like moisture meters. Do you know those things don't actually work? They're super inaccurate. Yeah, they do. Some people swear by them and just use them for their entire plant career. And other people think they're a scam. There are a few people like me who are kind of like, yeah, I use them, but I get why people don't like them. But generally people are either massively pro or massively con. This kind of division is not helpful for beginners at all. So who's right? And why are people so divided over them? To get to the bottom of this, first we need to know how they actually work. This is a moisture meter. It might look like this. They're pretty cheap. I wouldn't spend more than like a tenner on one, maybe 15 with inflation. But generally they're about, I think like 8 99 The easiest to get on Amazon. You can get them in garden centres, but they tend to be the digital ones, which in my experience are no more accurate and a lot more expensive. So this is all you need. So how do they work? This metal probe is just measuring the conductivity of the soil. The higher the water content, the higher the conductivity. So you'll get a bigger number on here. But why use a moisture meter over fingers? And there are a couple of reasons. The first one is that it's just easier. The second, it's quick and it's not messy. Well, I mean, it can be messy, but you know, it's less messy than using your fingers. But also we're given a numerical value, which when you've got a bit of experience with houseplants, isn't that important. We can tell whether a plant's wet or dry just by kind of feeling it. But when you've got no frame of reference, it's just nice having been given an actual answer. So all you do is stick the moisture meter in the soil like that. Have a look, it says nine. And we know we don't have to water. It'll tell us, it'll say dry, moist, wet. You don't water when it's wet. You don't water when it's moist. You water when it's dry. Whether it's on one, two or three, it doesn't really matter that much. I tend to water my plants on two. Plants that like to stay a little bit moister, three or four, but generally wait until it's two, then water them. There's no kind of guesswork involved. And when you're a beginner that's been given information like water when the top inch of the soil is dry, this is a much better way of knowing whether the plant is wet because the top inch could be dry but the bottom could be absolutely sodden. So then why don't we all use them? And the main reason that a lot of people hate moisture meters and don't recommend them is that they are massively inaccurate. And you might be thinking, well, is that not just the whole story then? If they're inaccurate, and they're gonna say that it's wet when it's dry or dry when it's wet, then they are just a waste of money. But for a beginner, they can still be really helpful because of the reason that they're inaccurate. So as we've already established, the probe measures the conductivity of soil. But as we kind of progress into the hobby, we might be using a chunkier potting mix. So we'll make up our own or add amendments to store-bought soil to make it more free draining. And what this does is adds more airflow to the roots so they can grow stronger. But this poses a problem for the moisture meter because if it's got more air, then there's less contact with the soil. So we can't accurately measure whether, whether the soil's wet or dry. And that's why it's inaccurate. The meter itself isn't inaccurate. It's just not getting an accurate reading from the medium it's put in. Some of the amendments that we use, like perlite, absorb moisture, but the actual grain of perlite itself isn't wet it's full of water on the inside but it's basically a stone filled with holes and the holes are filled with water but the outside might be reading as pretty dry there are another couple of reasons people don't like them one is that they can't really be calibrated so if you break them you can't really fix them again that i'm aware of i mean correct me if i'm wrong and there are a couple of ways that you can damage them the first one is just leave them permanently in soil and the other one is leave them permanently in water. After you've used them, you need to wipe them off and keep them in a cupboard, in a box, just not in soil and not in water. They can also damage roots. I don't really think this is that big of a deal unless you're really rough with them. Generally, you can feel resistance in the soil and the only resistance in the soil should be roots or it'll be something like bark, which you wouldn't be able to get through anyway. So as soon as you feel a bit of resistance, just don't continue. Also, if you do pierce a root, then they do contain more moisture, so you might get an inaccurate reading. If, you're, if you've if you got something with really chunky roots like a monstera, uh, and I only say this because actually, I actually did it this morning. They also can be inaccurate if your soil has a high salt content, and that might be if you've got, an, if you haven't repotted in a while and you fertilize a lot, salts can build up in the soil. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can happen if you don't top water and like flush the salts out. If you bottom water a lot, then it, 
the soil doesn't get flushed. It can be an issue, but it, it doesn't tend to be, but it can give inaccurate readings on these. So we've got the advantages and we've got the disadvantages. Should we use them? Now I do use them. I am somewhat of an underwaterer, so my soil isn't as free draining as a lot of people's. It tends to have a higher concentration of coir. I'm not great at remembering to fertilise either, so I tend to put a lot of worm castings in. They're pretty dense. So all in all, I've found that moisture meters are fairly accurate for me. I don't use them every time. There are methods that I prefer that are actually even easier, less messy, but I do use them. I also think they're a brilliant tool for beginners. When you buy a new plant, it usually comes in soil, obviously. The soil that nurseries use tends to be a bit denser than what you might make yourself. I'm guessing it's cheaper or, I don't know, it just tends to be. Probably actually less to do with price and more to do with the fact that if a plant's traveling from the Netherlands or the Philippines to the UK, they're gonna want something that retains a bit of water. So they're pretty good for plants that haven't been repotted into a homemade potting mix. So if you use store-bought potting mix that isn't very chunky or it's still in its sort of nursery soil, then you'd probably be all right with it. But I think one of the main advantages to using a moisture meter is that it can really show new plant people how long soil can stay damp for, especially when they're given the whole, you know, water when the top inch is dry. The top inch could be dry, it's exposed to the elements, but if, especially if you've got a big plant, the bottom might be absolutely soaking and you just can't tell. A lot of people say just, you know, try with, use your finger, but like my finger is only this long. If I've got like this m massive monstera, where is it? It's behind me. I can't get my finger in there. Obviously it works for some people, but it might, you know, there's options, there's options. And just a little note, you can get these which have a light meter and a pH meter. The light meters definitely don't work. Now I've never come across a really accurate light meter. I've tried, I've never like really spent money on them, but I've tried like the apps and stuff and they are wildly variable. You can try exactly the same spot within like half an hour and the light will have like gone up massively even though you know it's gone darker. Like they just don't work. pH. If you need to be checking the pH of your soil, you really need a soil test kit. I just wouldn't rely on one of these. Do you know, it, they might be perfe perfectly accurate. I've just got this feeling that they're not. I've also never felt the need to check the pH of my soil, so this really isn't something to be worried about. Right, so as I said, I do use a moisture meter, but if you don't want to use one or you read something and the person there really convinced you that they're inaccurate, which, you know, if you're using a really chunky soil mixture, they are inaccurate. So what do we do? Now, I think that by far the easiest and the best method to check whether your plant needs watering is to pick it up and see how heavy it is. Now, this sounds ridiculous because if you're new to plant care, you won't know. Being able to tell if my soil is wet or dry just by picking it up is one of the main reasons I keep most of my plants in their plastic nursery pots. And when I repot them, I tend to pot them into other plastic pots. The plastic pots don't have very much of their own weight. They're light, making it a lot easier to tell if the plant needs watering. It's one of those things that you think you'll never get to, but it's surprisingly quick how like you adapt to knowing how heavy your plant is when it's wet and when it's dry. But generally soil without moisture in it is pretty light, so it'll, it'll be lighter, but this obviously isn't useful if most of your plants are in terracotta. And if you've got massive heavy plants, it's just sort of impractical. Another thing you can do is use your fingers. That is probably the best way because we do know, like if you stick your finger in soil, you can tell if it's wet. It is difficult when you're new to plant care because you need to kind of learn the nuances of whether it's wet, like how wet is it? Is it is it wet? Is it a little bit moist? Is it dry? It's just easier at the start to have something else tell you. Right, so this isn't a very nice analogy, but I think it works. So you know when a doctor says to you, right, on a scale of one to 10, how much does it hurt? Now, we really struggle to know what's a five, what's an eight. Hopefully I don't know what a 10 is, but the moisture meter shows us what a one is and it shows us what a 10 is and then all we need to do is kind of learn a little bit of the nuance in the middle but as i said things are no good for really deep pots and 
the top of the soil dries out quicker, it just does. So you might need to be sticking your whole hand in, which is perfectly, you know, you can do that. But if you're running late for work and you're like, oh my God, does that plant need watering? You can't be like sticking your whole hand in and then you need them to be washing your hands. And then it's obviously not just your hands, you have to get your nail brush out and it's a whole thing. Just this, just mm, easier. Another thing people swear by is um, chopsticks. Now, chopsticks, I think, have the same problem that moisture meters do in that it massively depends on your soil mix as to how well it works. So the idea of using chopsticks is the same as using a skewer to test whether a cake's done. When it comes out clean, it should be done. When the chopstick comes out clean, the soil's dry. But some soils are just clingy and some soils and sometimes when your soil is wet it can't adhere properly to the chopstick so it comes out clean it just there's too much kind of scope so i don't recommend using chopsticks i think use a moisture meter fine or use your fingers or you know as i said just pick it up and, and see I, I don't tend to advise people use chopsticks it's one of those things that a little bit like i like using moisture meters some people like using chopsticks and they would never use a moisture meter. I would never use chopsticks. It's just a, a preference thing. So overall, I think moisture meters are a useful tool. And like I said, I still use them because my soil mix is still quite dense. I do recommend them to beginners, but what I kind of tend to say to people is use your moisture meter, get a feel for when your plants are wet and dry, whether it's picking them up or kind of using your finger, whatever it is, sort of learn to not use your moisture meter don't rely on it because it's the complete kind of belief that it works that causes people issues. And then as you start to progress, if you want to, into more kind of homemade chunky soil mixes, move your soil mixture onto a, somebody else, you know, give it away to a new fr plant friend person, explain to them or point them in the direction of this video and then they can pass it on. And I would definitely go for the one with the one prong, the one with the two prong, I mean, there's just double the chance of skewering a root, which, as I said, isn't that much of an issue. But if you're doing it every day, which you don't need to, I mean, I would check every four days unless it's boiling hot. But, you know, this is double the chance of skewering a root. So the one prong's fine. And we don't need the light and the pH meter. I would love to hear what other people have to say. As I said at the beginning, it's one of those things that tr some people truly hate moisture meters and just think they do not work at all. I, I get it. I get that you don't want people relying on them, but also practically speaking, if you've only got five minutes to check all your plants and they're all still in the nursery pots, as happens, you know, when you first get into plants, you just tend to buy a load at once. I just think they're a useful tool. But yeah, leave me a comment. I will, I'm interested to hear what people say. Uh, please like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.